your favorite Gen X crushes next on Retro Serial. Hey everyone, you're watching or listening to Retro Serial, and I'm your host, Ian C. I'm so glad you could join me for today's program. On today's program, we talk about our favorite crushes as we're growing up Gen X, which I know everyone had, uh, you know, their favorite crushes or a series of crushes. So we talk about that today with Thrash Pondo Ponds. However, I struggled a little bit with whether or not to release this video, and the reason why is that it gets a little, mm, I don't know, a little judgy, kind of, you know, a little, uh, I like this about women, I don't like this about women. It came across, in my mind, there was at least at times where I'm like, well, is this coming across a little um, judgy, a little, you know, insensitive, so to speak? So I decided to release it anyway with just that disclaimer. There were a couple times even in the filming of this where I felt a little like, oh man, this is not kind of coming across quite the way I want it to come across. So with that in mind, uh, just watch it with, uh, you know, watch it with that in mind, I guess is what I'm saying. So, but before we get to today's program, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this on your favorite social media. If you've done all that and you want to support the show further, please go ahead and hit the link to the Patreon page below where you will find two levels of support. There is the Cornflake Club, which is just $3 a month, and then there's the Honeycomb Hideout, but with the Honeycomb Hideout, which is $5 a month, you get most all videos and all podcasts at least one day in advance. All right, well, oh yeah, and then there's Venmo. If you don't want to have, you know, somebody taking money out of your account all the time, but you want to make a one-time donation, you can make it to at singularity underscore productions. Again, those will all be listed in the show notes, and if you you're a podcast listener, uh, please don't forget to like, comment, or not like, comment, subscribe. You know, like it, share it, um, leave a review and a rating, all that stuff you do for podcast stuff. All right, well, with all of that, let's get to the show. Record. Well, hey, everyone. I'm here via the internet with Thrash Pondo Ponds. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing awesome as always. The ENC, you got it, boss. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, um, well, I mean, this is, we're going to be talking about celebrity crushes today. As everybody knows, I did an introduction already. So everybody can, you know, think about their celebrity crush. And then on the show on Monday night, this coming Monday, which this may or may not be out before then, we're going to have Pat on to talk about bands that broke up and stuff, but the following Monday we'll, you know, we'll do, we'll do this. Or we actually, actually, we might actually thrash uh, because I've passed 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And so I think because we had Pat already, uh, already slotted for this Monday, what I might do next Monday is a live show celebrating the 500 subscriber and let people come on and talk and stuff. And so this goes for anybody who's listening to, I know that, you know, I do a lot on YouTube, but I also do a lot on podcasts. As a matter of fact, this, a lot of these recordings just go straight to podcast as well as to YouTube as well. Um, so again, don't miss those Monday night live streams because we'll be talking about that, but eventually what we'll do is we'll talk about what we're going to talk about today and then do a Monday night live stream about it as well. And that is celebrity crushes. That brings us to our topic today, celebrity crushes. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, you know, and, and we had talked before you, you had, had thought of this because um, I was kind of like, mm, what are we going to talk about today? I didn't really prepare. So you said, Hey, celebrity crushes. I'm like, Thrash, you nailed it. That's the best subject ever, right? Because we all had them, right? Everyone, everyone. How yeah. could you not? Yeah. You know, 
un- un- unless you were not exposed to any type of mass media yeah, <laughs> altogether. So I she lived in a closet, which I exactly. knew there were some people that I knew that that did not grow up with television. Um, there were even times in my life where we didn't have TV, uh, but uh, those were short lived. And those people were far and few between. I think the most of us had access to television and music and music. movies. So, and uh, you had mentioned that it's a good idea to uh, talk about all three genres, right? Yes. Some even had crossovers. There's a couple that I'm sure you can make a case would be in all three categories. Right, right, right. So, um, I started being girl for me personally. I started being girl crazy a little. I'll start with my own story first of all. Please. And we'll, we'll, I started being girl crazy a little early. Like, uh, you know, like a lot of times boys, they're, they got into girls like when they started getting into preteens or teens or whatever. But I started really liking girls when I was like young, young, like four or five years old. I wanted to hang out with girls and I liked them. I liked girls and um, and uh, I didn't, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I really liked them or I knew I was supposed to like them because everybody older than me liked them. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's both, but I know exactly what you mean. Like every, you, know, you, know, you yeah. always watch the big fish and see what they do. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, that, that's what, you know, you're supposed to do at that age. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, yeah, so I thought, you know, yeah, yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that was just a, uh, uh, because, like I said, because I was really having any kind of genuine feelings towards girls, which I, I know that I really wasn't, but other than just hanging around them a lot. And, but I do know that I know that like older kids liked girls, you know, the older boys liked girls. And so I was like, oh, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to like girls. And my mom had friends, obviously, who um, were female. And a lot of them had children. And for some reason, the children were always girls. So, I mean, I mean, a few, there's a few occasions where they were boys. But my mom's friends always had children who were girls, like ever, like all the time, like all her closest friends had girls who were friends. Uh, and so, um, well, this is uh, these aren't celebrities, obviously. These are like next door neighbor. We'll get into celebrities. So this this brings me to my first celebrity crush. This is all backdrop to my first celebrity crush, and it was it was a crush. It wasn't really a crush. I have to say that I really didn't have. I just knew that people were having feelings towards this girl, and it was Farrah Fawcett. Mm-hmm. Everybody was talking about her. <laughs> she had her own haircut. You know, she had her own look. Did she have her own doll even? Oh, yeah. The Farrah doll. Did she? Yeah. That yes, was, yes. Yeah. So probably her and maybe Carrie Fisher would have been. Those would have been 70s, you know, 70s crushes. And I would have been really young. And even at that point, I was too little to even know what I was even saying. I just knew everybody was talking about Farrah Fawcett and uh, Farrah is, is that my pronouncing your last name correctly? You pronounce yes, it. You are. Okay. Um, and I just knew that, she, you know, everybody liked her. And so like, I remember, Oh, I like her too. Cause everybody likes her. Everybody's talking about her. You know, she's the it girl uh, of the, uh, well, f- for many people for the seventies, she wasn't the only one, but she was the it girl for the seventies. So that's the first kind of, time that I really remember somebody in that was a star on TV or movies that I remember thinking, oh, this girl's really cute. Um, what, where did it start with you? I want to hear your story. Let's hear, let's, let's lay the backdrop and let's, uh, let's oh. peg that first celebrity. Well, I must open with a, uh, uh, a kudos. I too shared your affinity for Farrah Fawcett. I mean, uh, she, she was the cornerstone of uh, the Charlie's Angels, for some reason Carrie Fisher never really—I don't—I don't know—never hit a chord with me. Didn't think she was ugly, but just—I don't know—for some reason not my type. But bear in mind, I'm actually a few years older than you, so yes. I of course go back even further, and I like like you, um, sort of got an early start. <laughs> um, uh, as many of you already know. Uh, <laughs> one of my first uh, crashes was, of course, from Land of the Lost, Kathy Coleman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember her. 
who was also from Massachusetts too, by the way. I, I want to say from Weymouth, somewhere outside of Boston. But anyway, yeah, she, she, I don't know, she just, I don't, just that, getting caught up in that whole adventure sequence or something. I don't know, but I, I thought she was great. She could also sing and dance. I saw her do a few uh, song and dance numbers on talk shows and whatnot as well. So she just, she had it going on as far as I was concerned when I was nine years old. But there was actually one even before that. Okay, I'm really dating myself here. Promise you won't laugh? No, I'm, I'm, well, I can't promise. <laughs> I can't promise. I will do try my best to try. Not, to try not to laugh. <laughs> Fair enough. Veronica Cartwright from Lost in Space. Oh. Uh, Penny. Uh, she, she's the... The little which, brunette. The little brunette. Okay. Little brunette. Yeah. Which, which is would, funny because... Why well, would anybody laugh about that? Was it? Well, was, most people... Um, we were after Marta Christensen, the, the, the substantially older blonde. Okay. But bear in mind, they, they were both substantially older than me. I was probably four or five at this stage of the ball game. Right. And I, I don't know. Uh, Penny just seemed more approachable. Mm. And um, But anyway, so if anybody predated uh, Kathy Coleman, it would have to be Veronica Cartwright. So were you, were you one of those guys who was like, oh, I wish I was on that spaceship too, man? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, another... girl stuck with her brother. If I could join them, it would be a much it would be a much better ball. Right. Game. You know, right. another girl who really got my attention uh, back then, it was uh, Mindy from work and Mindy. Pam. Pam Dauber. Da- yeah. Pam yeah. Dauber, yeah. Yeah. She, yeah I thought cute. she was really. Yeah. I thought she was really cute. And even back at that time, I remember thinking, yeah, she's she's very cute. Um Moving to the late 70s, early 80s, I think, unless there's something more you want to say about the 70s. Any any other thing? Oh, no, I mean, my, my, my notes were actually all geared towards um, 80s. 80s. But I think it was, but it was because I'm doing Gen X, but I think it was more than fair that we actually start in the primal swamps with the 70s. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, one of these is kind of, the, the ones that I'm going to mention now are kind of crossovers. You know, like started in the 70s and then went to the 80s. And then we could obviously I'm 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 thinking TV more, but I mean, we can we got to expand it. We got to think of expansions as well, because there were some especially in the 80s. There were some uh, pop stars that I really had a thing for. Well, Um, that was the MTV generation. You forget MTV was a game changer. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were always attractive women in the music industry. Some attractive men, too, I suppose. But Mm -hmm. I didn't really watch them. Uh, But there were some very attractive women earlier on. But with the advent of the music video and we watched the music as much, if not more, as listened to it, um, they began to polish the entertainers more and they had to be as visually entertaining as they were audibly entertaining and that's possibly the most politically correct way i could put it without no, i i think that's a great way to put it. but uh oh, oh i don't think that at all i think that uh I, yeah they had to be i think that that unfortunately whether it's politically correct or not i think a lot of people just got looked over whether or not they were talented or not because they just didn't have the look they and you, you're selling on a whole new level, you know, and it, unfortunately, that's the way the industry ran for a long time. Um, uh, but with that said, um, uh, still going to go small screen at this point, but kind of would cross over from 70s to 80s. But for me, it was more in the 80s would have been uh, the Three's Company Girls. Um, both any of them, uh, <laughs> any, uh, yeah, any of them for real, yeah, any of them for real. Terry, not so much, sorry, not not so much with her, but Suzanne Summers and um, and uh, Chrissy, Chris, yeah, Chrissy, and no, and Janet, the girl who played Janet. Oh, yeah, um, Janet, yes, of course, yeah, I mean, that's just the um, those two girls were so beautiful. You know what I mean? They still are, actually. They are still so very, very beautiful. And honestly, I probably would have leaned more toward Janet, uh, believe it or not. I would or have... approachable. There's something about that approachability factor yeah. that, um, that goes a long way. Although, full disclosure, and I was actually talking about this to Justin once, ages ago, when we were putting together um, uh, his live chat. Um, my personal favorite was Jenny Harrison, I must confess. Is was that Cindy? 
Cindy, yes. Yeah. I said Chris, I meant Cindy. She was always my all-time favorite. Now, I don't think there was a bad one of the bunch, but um uh, No, it's not like Terry was bad with the girl. She was very beautiful, but it's not like somebody I had a crush on her, you know, liked at all. She was just a good looking girl, you know, not every good looking girl you have some attraction toward, you know. So, but um I get I get Cindy, she is she is a pretty girl. She had it going on. She really did. (laughs) She did have it going on. I just liked Janet's. I liked Janet's eyes. To this day, I go back and I just look at those beautiful dark eyes that she had. And um, the only thing that I didn't really care for with Janet was the haircut. I just went to the pixie cut. I don't don't care for that. That spiky, that shorter, more now short hair. Like, listen, this is just how i feel don't crucify me anybody okay don't make don't be mad at me um it's not that i don't like short hair on girls some short hair works i just like a more feminine cut and i did not like that that cut i didn't i thought that the one where it's kind of long here and then goes out there and um i i just i I, it's more like a boy's cut to me and i just didn't like that haircut i like a more now she did have there's one season where she kind of had long it was still short but it was kind of longer in front and 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 kind of even in the back do you remember that i don't know if you remember that or not what once she because i remember in the first season she it had was the, longer uh, the curly in front. hair and then yeah. she cut it all off and after that i really stopped paying attention to her hair yeah <laughs> I really because like. Lost me. I really like hair. So anyway, yeah. uh, so that's a TV one kind of bridging. Do you have any that bridge, or what do you? Which which? Where do you want to go next from here? The biggest bridge I can think of from the seventies to the eighties had to have been Catherine Bach, Daisy Duke from the Dukes of Hazzard. Oh yeah, all you kinds know, of guys she, had she, crushes she, on she, her. He, oh, like all kinds. And again, she she was this huge crossover between the seventies and eighties, and she actually bridged it quite well. I thought, you yeah. know, th- th- there's an article of clothing named after her. That in and of itself puts her in the uh, in in the history books. Oh, oh, you mean the, the Daisy Dukes. the Daisy Dukes? Yeah, right, right, the short yeah. Shorts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I know a lot. Of, she wasn't really my thing, but I know a lot of guys really liked her. A lot of, I mean, she's a good looking girl. <laughs> I, I think, I know I was worried about this episode. You know why I was worried about this episode? Because I was worried we're going to come off as like male pigs. You know, I'm making all these, no, not her. And yes, her and not her. Like we all had celebrity crushes for one reason or another, girls and guys alike. Well, I, I like know. I said, I've, I've mentioned this on several occasions because we're going back to when we were teens or often preteens. Back then, we were just crazy kids growing up. Now we sound like dirty old men. So please, people, everyone listening, take this in the context that was intended. We're reminiscing about our childhood not being lecherous. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Remember that context. Uh, please remember. I'm not trying to make too many judgments here or anything like that or come off. All these judgy. people we mentioned are all older than we are. <laughs> yeah. You know, think yeah, of it that for way. Sure. You know? Um uh, w- w- uh so a crossover one for me as far as like music goes. Oh well, uh, or well, let's go into music was okay. obviously Listen, I I thought the Bangles, man, any girl from the Bangles and also the Go Go's as well. But that uh-huh. lead singer of the Bangles was, she was really something. Susan else. Hoff. Yes. Yeah, Susan Hoff. She was great. Yes, I, I can definitely give you that one. Okay, so who else for for music? Um, what was the girl's name? Uh, I w- she was that German singer to Ninety Nine Luft Balloons. Uh, Nina, I think her name was. Her professional name was. Yeah, I thought she was totes adorb, but probably the most iconic uh, female crush of the '80s has got to go to Madonna, because mm. just because she was there <laughs> in, in everything. Right. I mean, uh, and I, th- I think a lot of boys were like, you know, very very uh, taken with her. Yeah, and and of course, when you want to talk crossovers, she was also active um, on the big screen and also on the small. So she was, uh, as far as our topic for today, a triple threat. Well, what what did she do on the small screen? I don't remember her. She would do guest spots on on TV. Her her, um, of course, the talk show circuit. Uh, oh. There there's a very famous episode of um, 
uh, David Letterman, where she like she kind of mocks him, and no one was really sure if it was staged or if it was just her being a snot rag. But she, she did a few TV shows over the years. Oh, I um, see. Usually just being Madonna. But mm. that's a Counties. I always call that a Counties. Right, right, right. And well, she had a whole industry of clothing too, as well. I mean, girls were really trying. I remember there there was lots of girls at my school who were basically trying to look like Madonna. I mean, the thrift shop look. Yeah, you know, with the, with the wristbands and the yeah. hair ribbon and the black uh, on black ensembles. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. And then, of course, how can one forget Samantha Fox? Oh yeah, Samantha. How Fox. can one forget Samantha Fox? Yeah, she was she was great. Yeah, she was really good. Across uh, the pond, as it were. Yeah, across the pond. Uh, well, who else? Who else we got from the '80s? I know I got a ton of them from the '80s. Actually, girls that I really enjoyed from there. Now I think a lot of guys too. I think a lot of guys like they're like when when they think of iconic crushes of the '80s, I think they think of phoebe cates i think that's Huge. probably got to be like if you did a poll of people who um you know who who had a crush on a girl in the 80s it would have been phoebe cates that iconic scene from fast times oh where yeah they're playing walking in stereo in the background right um right. definitely that that was that was recently voted the the number one most iconic uh, sexy scene from Amer- uh, American 80s anything. That's the one that everybody remembers. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I actually liked uh, Jennifer Jason Lee better, personally. I'm- A lot of people did. Uh, and I'm... Um- I, I've actually given them out of some thought. I, I think it's because she actually looked like a girl you would have gone to high school with. Phoebe mm. Cates did not. <laughs> oh, Phoebe really? Kids- she kind of- yeah, Phoebe Kids looked like she just walked off the cover of a magazine, but Jennifer Jason Lee, she looked like she could have actually been in your history class. She had a little little bit of a girl next door kind of look to her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, th- I, th- I think that had a lot to do with it. I think so, too. I think so, too. Um, well, I, well, well, who else from the 80s? I mean, I got. Well, of course, Heather Thomas from The Fall Guy. Oh, yeah. Heather and if Thomas. we're sticking with and if we're sticking with Heather's, then of course it was Heather Locklear from Dynasty and T.J. Hooker. Yeah, and you you must know the story. You must have already heard the story at some point in your life. You know how Tommy Lee was, of course, married to uh, Heather Locklear, right? Right. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead and tell it again. Yeah. For those of you who aren't familiar, uh, supposedly he had a he too had a crush on Heather Thomas, and got one of his lackeys to like you know that 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 Heather girl who's on that show. Uh, I want to go out with her. Uh, get me her contact info and put put me to, in touch with her. And the lackey went off and thought Tommy Lee meant Heather Locklear, not Heather Thomas, and put her on the him on the phone with Heather Tom, uh, Locklear. Oh wow! And they're the, and they're chatting and they're chatting. And it's like, oh okay, you're on TV now. Actually, while I'm talking to you. And she knew her show wasn't on the night, so she's like, no, that's not me. Oh no, yeah, I see you right there. And she's like. <sighs> What am I wearing? He goes, you know that that bikini, and she's like, that's Heather Thomas. I'm Heather Locklear, yeah. and he kind of got taken aback. He's like, what are you on? And she's like, I'm on Dynasty and DJ Hooker, and he's like, oh, you still want to go out? <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is tragic history. Oh yeah, but yeah. <laughs> history nonetheless. So well, hey, Heather Thomas dodged a bullet on that one. Maybe I mean, what if it worked out with them? You know, but I- how could it? How could it? The man destroyed Heather Locklear and Pamela Anderson. How could he have not destroyed Heather Thomas? Did he destroy <laughs> them? Do you think that's destroyed-ish? Yeah, you know, they, they were. Neither one of them were better off than when they started after being with him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That one's hard for me to to think about it in that in those terms because I don't know. Well, opinion is divided, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> we especially... should we should do a poll. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially the um, oh, what is it? Especially the um, Pamela Anderson. I think she was already headed for a whirlwind downward spiral. Anyway, I think that would have, I think that would have happened with or without Tommy Lee personally. Maybe Heather Locklear, but maybe not. Now, now Heather Locklear is married to Richie Sambora. Are they still married? 
I don't know. She started going downhill based on what you see in the tabloids. Mm. So um, I don't I don't think things have really stabilized for her, I'm afraid. So I don't, um, my guess is um, if they are married, well, yeah. I would be surprised if things aren't going well in paradise. Right, right. Well, let me just say, too, that uh, we're talking about film as well. The uh, we, we got to mention people from the Brat Pack. But out of so, but out of the brat pack, out of all of them, for the one for me, the one for me is Molly Ringwall. I just think she is she's still beautiful to this day. She is very beautiful. Now, this is not to say that you know Demi Moore and um, Ali Sheedy are not beautiful as well. They're they're both very beautiful girls, but they're but I just had a super big crush for. Uh, for Molly, that's all there was to it. I never, she never really um, struck a chord with me. I must say, but I must say, she. I don't know if you've ever seen. She did a movie called I want to say Wild Horses, or yeah. something like that. It was, and it was this very, very steamy movie. And I got to tell you, I saw that, and I sort of saw her in a whole new light. So let's uh, just say I can certainly see where you're going <laughs> with right. uh, with her. Um, if I had to pick one from the Rat Pack, I would probably, believe it or not, go with Demi Moore. Oh, for, really? for some reason, I I, I, th- I thought she was just cool for some reason. Nothing wrong with Ali Sheedy, but I probably would have gone with that. Um, uh, Debbie Moore hmm, hmm. From, from that um, period, shall we say? Well, but of course, if we're sticking with movies, and it's funny, on my way home from um, running some errands today, the song, the song was actually from the movie was actually on the radio, um, "Streets of Fire." If we're gonna do um, a, a film crush, I'm still gonna throw my lot in with Diane Lane. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. From "Streets of Fire," it. from the Cotton Club, from the Outsiders. She was she she was just <laughs> I thought she was great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, I there's lots of small screen ones though that I just I mean I can't go not talk about. I mean, for example, uh probably one of them that was huge for me was uh was Alyssa Milano. I've mentioned that before, but Alyssa Milano was just fabulous. <laughs> I, I, you were in very good company. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. And um, and I don't know who else. Who well, it? have you heard my Alyssa Milano story? I don't think so. <laughs> okay, I I have to qualify. This is it was more than likely a put on, but this was many 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 years ago. I was at this college pig roast up in Vermont. And a girl who bore a now you, she was of course from New York, um, uh, and I was at this pig roast, and there was this girl who bore a striking resemblance uh, to Miss Milano, and I actually um, started chatting with her, and I go, you know who you look just like, and she goes, oh, Alyssa Milano, and I go, yeah, how'd you guess? And she goes, because I am. And I actually had this extended conversation with this person, <laughs> professing. To be Alyssa Milano. Now, I was probably three sheets to the wind, if not four and a half. Yeah. So <laughs> she, in all probability, was pulling my leg. But the time frame did match up. Uh-huh. So, and, it, and um, she could have just been being very polite. And, oh, yeah, here's another drunken fan. So the least I could do is indulge him. But I have told the story for years as though it were true. Now, Miss Milano, if you're watching and it wasn't you, I do apologize. Um, <laughs> but I'm telling the story as true as it was to me. <laughs> yeah, right. I get it. I, I get it. I, I, yeah, I very much get that. Okay, so uh, I mean, first for there's there were a ton of them in the small screen that I really did like. So um, uh, there were there was not just Mil- Alyssa Milano, but uh, from um, uh, uh, from Family Ties, the younger daughter of Family Ties. Now both of them were are were very pretty, uh, but I liked uh, Jennifer. Now I forgot her name or her real name's going right out of my head, but it's but- on. The tip of my tongue, and I can't place it, but yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The girl, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll look it up here real quick. Yeah, uh, cast of family ties. I thought you would have gone with um, the older one. 
You know, no, I you you think I would have, but I I Bateman, it, Justin Bateman. Yeah, I didn't. I I like the the younger, kind of more uh, rounder face, chubbier cheeked Tanya Tina Yothers. That's her name. Tina I knew it was Yothers. Yothers. I couldn't think of her first name, and I didn't want to botch it. But yes, Yothers. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, she was. I thought she was very pretty. Uh, Justine Bateman was. Pr- she's a pretty girl too. But I mean, it is for some reason I don't know. The younger one more appealed to me. So my wife kind of looked like her too, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of that rounder face, bigger cheeks, blonde hair, kind of thing that that really appealed to me. So you can see why I married who I married. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you have a type. <laughs> I don't though. I, I, I it's that's the thing. I really don't have a type. I it just be, beauty kind of strikes me at the way it strikes me, and and it's for like you know Alyssa Milano is way different than um, Tina. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, they're, they're, way, they're way different in in appearance and stuff. But I I I would have married either one of them, and not just for the money. <laughs> Just so nobody well, thinks I'm shallow. It wasn't for the money. It would have been for the looks. <laughs> that's much less shallow. <laughs> right. That's what I was thinking. Hmm. All right. Well, what else we got from the 80s is this. The, it's a cornucopia. It's yeah. It just it really is a cornucopia. Um, speaking of uh, TV again, as we were, um, you got to do Married with Children. Oh, well, that was the other one because that came out again. later 80s. And that was the other one that really kind of took my breath away because Christina Applegate was the bomb for me for many, many years. I mean, that was just, well, I don't know about many years. It felt like a long time. You know, I mean, I was a kid and every day felt like an eternity, you know, so, but, but Christina Applegate, oh my goodness, loved her, still do. Still love Christina Applegate. Oh, beautiful woman. Oh, my. Yeah. It dropped dead gorgeous girl. And she'd have to be in her 50s now, wouldn't she? Uh, I don't know if she's as old as I think she's right around my age. So she might just barely be in her 50s, like maybe 51 or something like that. Because I thought she was three or four years younger than I am. And I, I, yeah. I just turned 55. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She might be like a couple years older than me and a couple years younger than you. So. Somewhere uh, in the middle, yeah. you know. Yeah, and loved her in Anchor Man as well. It's looking, she's looking great. Oh, of course, of course, love that movie. Love that movie. Right. Uh, speaking speaking of movies, um, were you a Labyrinth fan? Uh yeah, yeah. Because Jennifer Connelly. Yes, of course. Yeah. Jennifer Jennifer Connelly was just amazing. <laughs> Still is. She actually, I think she looks better now than she did. 30 years ago. You know, I think so too. I actually do think so as well. Uh, there, there's there's an implication she may have um, had uh, some type of uh, augmentation or like surgeries to keep her to her beauty. Uh, if she did, it worked. Because again, I think she looks better now than she did 30 years ago. Well, I, I don't begrudge girls for doing that. You know, I mean... A lot of men do it too. <laughs> it's something that they... You have to feel comfortable in your own skin. You know, I really believe that you have to feel good about yourself in your own skin. And if you don't, and there's something you can do about it, and you want to do something about it, by all means, go ahead. Now, there are there are exceptions when people get like, you know, too far out there, you know, uh, of course, but, um, but, uh, but you know, I mean, if you can do a little plastic and you want to, you know, it's up to you. You have to feel comfortable in your own skin. If you don't feel comfortable in your own skin, that's a problem, you know, and if cosmetic surgery helps you and makes you feel better about you, uh, then great. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, it's not my business. Somebody wants to do that. And, and, uh, and, and if they feel, like I said, and if they feel good about it, fine. It doesn't matter to me. All right. So it's okay. I'm not going to judge either way. If somebody, um, like right now, the whole gray hair thing is really in style for girls, like just not dying it, just letting it go gray. And that's, I mean, I think that's wonderful. I'm like, go on, just 
let it all grow out. Be gray. I, you know, you like it. You feel comfortable with it. And there are some girls out there who are absolutely gorgeous with with gray hair. And that's great. And there are some girls who are like, no, I will never have that. I will dye my hair to the day I die. You know, I that's fine too. You know, I mean, if you feel better dyeing your hair with that, you know, the cosmetic that, who am I to judge on that? Let If you like it, do it. Anyway, that's what I think. Uh, well, I agree. I, 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 I wholeheartedly concur. Yeah. You know, uh, men have let themselves go gray for decades and people have been okay with it. I'm going, I'm, I'm more salt than pepper myself, actually. So, you know what? Fair's fair. If, if women want to um, adopt the look, yeah, I'm all over it. I'm gray in the beard for sure. Me too. Uh, <laughs> the, hair is, the hair is going gray. The hair is what's left of it. It's going gray. What's left? <laughs> well, yeah, the receding hairline. Yeah, it's, that's happening a little. Yeah, I love it. Little bald spots, just what I was hoping for. A little bald spot in the back and a receding hairline was exactly what I was looking forward to as I got older. I don't know. I, you know, if I could do something about it, I would. Uh, this is going to be a little bit embarrassing. Well, I was th- thinking of not just um, girls who we thought were, were, um, were were cute or we had a crush on but also this is a girl who i thought was cute and had a crush on but i also really liked her music which was completely out of character for me are you ready for this i am ready freddie tiffany really i can see that I can see that. I was more of a Debbie Gibson fan, I like, but I can certainly see Tim. Oh, Tiffany. I like Debbie Gibson too. I like Debbie <laughs> Gibson too, but I I liked Tiffany and I liked her music. I had her tape. Really? I did have her tape, and I used to, <laughs> adorable. I used to play her. I used to play guitar to it. I used to pl- I used to like try to figure out like how you how to play it on the guitar well her biggest hit you remember was actually a cover of tommy james and the chandelles oh yeah tommy james and the chandelles were awesome so the the fact that you were into music well why wouldn't you be she actually if i remember she had a couple of cover hits too didn't she that was her big one but i think she did a couple of other covers over the years too i don't remember i don't we're going back we're going back almost 40 years now i mean it's crazy her the the tape i would listen to her tape i liked it i the one that just said tiffany on it now i know she's had more since and actually her last tape her not tape but her last album dating myself was uh i think it was like mid 2000s and it was very good it was actually critically critically acclaimed but it just wasn't popular she actually did a very very good job uh with the music but um it just didn't hit a chord with audiences. I but. always, always felt bad for her because, you know, she was one of the first of this whole, like, like eighties, uh, what they used to call the mall sound. It was just the girl next door belting out an old uh, 60s tune, and and it, she catapulted her into mega stardom. And she actually discovered uh, the boys from Boston. She discovered new kids on the block. They were still singing on street corners. And she goes, oh, these guys are great. And long story short, they became her opening act. And s- someone, one of her producers, something said, great idea. We'll have you dating one of them. And it'll be like a whole crossover thing. It's like something out of old American bandstand. And what happened was all the little teeny boppers that were her fan base became jealous of her spending all this time with the new kids on the block, even dating one. And they turned on her like she was a chunk of plutonium. And her career was killed because she discovered new kids. And I always thought that that was a really raw deal. Yeah, that's a raw deal for sure. It's awful. It really was. But teenage girls can be vicious. Yeah, for sure. Well, do we have anything from the else from the eighties like, before we cross over into the nineties? Or I'm sure one or two might pop back into our head. Some of them in the nineties will probably got their start in the eighties. Yeah. So the only other one I can think of off the top of my head, and she's still, she's still a beautiful woman today, um, Valerie Bertinelli. Oh yeah, well that started the seventies. Seventies, yeah, it, exactly. It started in the seventies, and I, I kind of grew up with her because she was a few years old than I was. But you remember when she started the show? She was sort of like she was the awkward-looking kid sister. 
Yeah. Mackenzie Phillips, who I never fully understood. I never thought she was attractive. No offense to her, but but I always thought that Valerie was the cute one. She then blossomed into this gorgeous woman and is still gorgeous to this day. Um, so yeah, that that's one before we leave the eighties, I don't want to forget her. Yeah. I don't want to forget her too, but, uh, a gr- also a girl that kind of maybe started in the eighties. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and really kind of blossomed in the nineties for me was drew Barrymore. Oh uh, yeah. I God, mean, yeah. <laughs> she, she became kind of really iconic throughout the nineties as far as a, a celebrity crush is concerned. But, uh, but, you know, I mean, late eighties and she was, she was a kid in the eighties, but I think she's like a year younger than me or something like that. And, um, but yeah, uh, uh, but in the nineties, boy, she really started to take on, uh, that celebrity crush status. Everybody kind of liked her. Mm -hmm. And another one that kind of crossed over too, uh, was Danica, um, Winnie Cooper, the girl who played Winnie Cooper. A little young for me, so I, I kind of missed that whole phase. Bear in mind, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a bit older than you. Um, when she was like 13, 14, I would have been like 20. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I certainly know she, she certainly grew into a beautiful woman, but I kind of missed the boat on her. Because, yeah. Because, again, she was probably more your age, like like when she first I, did. Uh, yeah. She, she wasn't my type. She really wasn't. But, I mean, I know a lot of people really did like her. Uh, but no, yeah, she would have been my, I think uh, that's one girl who I think is more pretty now than back then. But they, I think they did that on purpose too. You know, like I think they made her a little bit more of a plain Jane kind of a girl then, but she is, she's gorgeous at this point. But, but she was one of those girls that, you know, for me in my, at my age from the eighties to the nineties, you know, with the, that, that um show that the show that she was on um and i know a lot of people did but i could see where you are i mean you know by the time you're getting the 90s you're getting a lot older and you're not, not going to be interested hopefully you're not going to be interested <laughs> you know, i wasn't but 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 there were some that are approximately my age you know what i'm saying uh girls that would have been in the late teens and went to their uh 20s and 30s in the uh in the 90s but one thing before we move too far along though i have to ask you um did you ever watch the tv show impractical jokers oh yeah yeah yes did you ever see the one with winnie on it oh yeah there's been two with her on it actually well one in particular Uh, it's it's the one where um the guy has to admit that she was his first crush yes and he's all oiled up in the in yes and she's just kind of sitting there going. <laughs> now I don't know I, if she was in on it and was just trying to make it more awkward, or uh, if she was just being a Karen. I but don't that know. was so painful to watch. That was not a right. practical joke. That was like watching an animal get tortured. Well, and- a lot of those impractical jokers, the a lot of them are very cringy. They're they very, really they're very hard to watch. And I, I mean, I don't know if she was thinking she was doing an interview and this guy comes in all oiled up because it was back in the, well, no, I think it was like season four. So they had been out for a while, so four, four or five. I, I, so it wasn't like their first season, but so I don't know. If she, but, you know, even though it's been on for nine seasons, there are still people who don't know who they are. You know, I suppose that's, you're right. I suppose you're right because it's like if I was told I was going to be on an impractical jokers, I'd know that there would be something coming up. Right. But, but like, like I said, I, I, I um, something to, I'd like to think that the guys told her what she was in for and they go, please play along, please act all grossed out. It'll yeah. make it so much more awkward. Um, rather than the fact that she was just being a snot rag. <laughs> I, would, I would really well, prefer. I mean, do you think she was being a snot rag? I mean, here comes this guy in underwear. And all oiled up because he thinks he's going on and he's and maybe you're thinking that you're being interviewed, like maybe for one of your books or something or interviewed for a magazine or something. You know, these celebrities, they get interviewed and and you're a girl, too. Uh And you have this guy come in (laughs) all oiled up in underwear. 
I don't know. I really don't know if she was acting. I, I, I think any girl may have acted like that, but she might have been told to, you know, I don't know. When, when you put it, when you put it like that, it's entirely possible that she was just like, what have I got myself into? But that sort of kamikaze interviewing, that's not uncommon these days. I mean, I don't know if you ever watched the Eric Andre show, but guests were told just whatever happens, just play along. This is Eric Andre. He's an improvisational comic. It's an interview show, but he, he more light than likely will just pull out a chainsaw and cut his desk in half as opposed to ask you a question. So just play along. Wow. Um, and um, kind of like between two ferns. Not familiar. Oh, you don't you haven't watched between two ferns. No, I have not. I'm afraid. Oh, you got to watch it on YouTube. It's Zach Galifianakis. Love him. And uh, if, well, if you love him, there's actually even a movie. But you got to watch the ones on the the Funny or Die ones first on YouTube. Because the mm-hmm. if you don't get that, then you won't get that. But he does celebrity interviews. And they are the most cringy celebrity interviews that you could possibly imagine i love funny or die i can't believe i haven't seen these, oh but. my goodness it's so yeah oh it's so bad like uh there was one girl who was in um uh perfect pitch two and and three and she was in and i can't remember her name but she's on there and he goes so you were in perfect pitch two and three uh do you ever wish that you were in the good one <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, I mean, it was so. It was. It was. Uh, it was it's, uh, they had this girl on there that was like, I can't remember. Um, yeah, I mean, it's he. He says things that are just like off, and it's not slick. Like I mean, I kind of actually presented it that way a little bit slick. It's not slick. It's very awkward. It's like he's stumbling for words. He doesn't really know what to say. He's very awkward. Uh, what was the other one that he said that some girl who got an Oscar and he goes, so, uh, you got an Oscar. Uh, did it surprise you that it was for acting? (laughs) 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 Yeah. Funny. Yeah. It's funny or die between two ferns. He, he actually interviewed Barack Obama too. Barack Obama and um, (laughs) all kinds of people. Wait, is between, is this the one where in the movie, they um, have to interview a certain unnamed uh, East Asian dictator or is no. that a different movie? Oh, because no. he, he did a movie based on that. Too. I yeah. was wondering if there was some crossover connection. No, it isn't. No. It isn't right. that at all. It's okay. it, yeah, it's uh, I know what that movie is. It's uh, that also has James Franco in it, I think. And I, who I guess they're actually very close friends. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would hope so. They're in a lot no. of movies together. So they <laughs> hang out in the same crowds. Like, I can't stand this guy. I guess it's a real sunny and share kind of situation. Uh, but uh, yeah, between, but there's a movie called Between Two Ferns, too. It's on Netflix. But the stuff on YouTube is gold. I mean, it just that, that means really, honestly, stop. As soon as we're done, Go watch a couple of those episodes, and I'd be interested in hearing what you think. Why aren't you watching it now? <laughs> well, we're doing an interview. I know, right I know. Here. I'm just playing along, but right, uh, right. It, it, it sounds like right in my alley. I, people have actually said to me that I remind them of Zach Galifianakis, and yeah. I tell them that they do. I can think of no higher praise. Yeah, that's thank you. I, that's really sweet. Yeah, Zach although, Gal- although a couple although, of people said Mark Ruffalo, and I don't see that at all. But I'm like <laughs> Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo, yes. Who's Ruffalo? Who's Mark yeah. Ruffalo. Oh, he's an actor. He's been in some great stuff. He he's, a he's not the very good looking man. He's not the yes. Hulk. Is, oh, okay. yes, he was the All Hulk. Right. Okay, yeah. I yeah. don't see that. I, I just don't. But sorry, I it. don't either. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if I have any celebrity parallels though. I really don't. I did a uh, uh, long time ago, back when I had Facebook. I don't have Facebook anymore. But way back when I had Facebook. Um, I did that whole celebrity like morph into it, you know, uh-huh. morph into celebrity. And like they made me Will Smith. <laughs> I don't look a thing like Will Smith. They said, put I your don't want to be that here. guy. <laughs> I said, put your picture here and we will turn you into a celebrity uh, lookalike. And, you know, or who's, who's your celebrity lookalike? And they did 
yeah, for some reason they did Will Smith. As... A little like Patrick Stewart. You're much, much, much younger than he is. But I, I, I'd almost think Patrick. I go, I go for that. I just don't think I've got one. I just don't think I've got a celebrity <laughs> parallel. It's just not happening. I don't know. There's nobody out there. I just, well, I'm one of a kind. They broke them all. They broke them all. I was just gonna say they broke them all with you. <laughs> oh well, uh, what a, what do you know? Well, what it, what's uh, we got some other stuff here from the '90s. From anybody from the '90s you can think of, or well, I'm I'm actually racking my brains going back to the early '90s, and I'm trying. Well, to you know, one from was... the '70s that we forgot too was oh, which is what uh, would have would have been uh, Marsha Brady. The Brady girls never really hit it with me. I, I'm not well, sure not, why. Not me either. But I mean, they were they were many I, people's crushes. Yeah, though. they were many people's crushes. I, I can certainly see that. But um, uh, but as far as the '90s, the one the one that first leapt into my mind when you mentioned the '90s would would have to have been uh, Agent Scully. Oh yeah, for sure. Yes, from the yeah. X Files. Yeah, she definitely was. Uh, one of mine too. I liked her quite a bit, and yeah, I um, thought she was great. And um, Alyssa, uh, not Alyssa Milano, but um, oh gosh, Alicia Silverstone. Oh yeah, yeah, a uh, Batgirl in the worst Batman movie. <laughs> yeah, well, from yeah, you know, she was you know in that um, show where it's it's a famous show. Uh, they had a, a TV movie, ba- a TV show based off of it, where she plays an air, kind of an airhead. Her dad's a lawyer. Oh. Paul oh. Rudd's in it. Oh yes. Um. Oh, it's gonna kill me now. Um. It's based on. I can't even think what it's based on now. <laughs> uh, it's based on Emma. It's based on Emma. It's based on Emma, the um, the uh, 19th century uh, novel um, about the girl matchmaker, and it's called um, Clueless. Oh, Clueless, Clueless is the movie. That's right. Yeah, Clueless, Clueless is the movie. Is the movie. Yes. That's the movie. based on Emma. It's based on Emma. Really? Yeah. If if you, if you read the backstory, you can. It actually it holds water. I don't. Oh. I, I, I'm guessing you've never read Emma, but if, no. if, if, if you read the backstory, you can say, "Oh yeah, I see this. Um, this this young girl uh, gets um, matches up her. Uh, what do they used to call them? But not a nanny, an au pair. The the woman, her governess. She matches her governess up with somebody, and it works out. So she decides she's a matchmaker. So she spends the rest of the book trying to help other people find love, and ends up finding love herself. Okay. And yeah, the, you know, that clueless. Oh, I remember her actually. She was remember she got her start doing the um the Aerosmith videos. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. She did the Aerosmith videos with Liv Tyler. That's and... my favorite. <laughs> I must confess, Liv Tyler, another one from the nineties, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yes, I, I do remember those videos. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Liv Tyler. She was great. I I had to have to admit I liked Alicia Silverstone. Um, uh, she was in the show called Crush too, wasn't she? Uh, Clueless, you mean? No, no, she was in a show called Crush. Crush with uh, yeah, with uh, the guy. F- <laughs> this whole show is about like us naming actors and shows that we can't think of. Think of, yes, indeed. When we think of the actor, <laughs> wasn't she in this show? In that, with that, with that guy, this guy, he was in the show, always wore the and, shirt, and yeah, you know, well, it's but how Carrie, my mind works. Carrie El- El- Elsway, Carrie Elsway. Where she played a psycho. Oh, the crush. Yeah. And uh, you said show, which you do that. Oh, sometimes. sorry, I do that movie. all the time. A movie. <laughs> so a it's a movie. Yeah. Yeah. That that was her first big breakthrough film. Yeah. And that the, the crush where she plays the psycho girl next door. Yeah. Um. And uh, yes, there there were actually, if I remember correctly, at that time there were a few movies that were based on that premise. Um. Almost Hitchcock esque, where uh, you move into a new neighborhood, you meet this like nice little kid next door, and it turns out that he's a sociopath. Um, there were a few like that. That one was probably the most hypersexualized, but there were a few along those lines, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so, there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a crazy one. That was like, yeah. oh gosh, it, it really was. <laughs> I know that would kind of you know. 
Yes. He get in all kinds of trouble with that. <laughs> oh, could you ever? <laughs> yeah. Uh, another one, too, was Julia Stiles. A lot of people like Julia Stiles. I don't know if you were you were a fan of hers or not. But... She's actually from Cape Cod. Oh, okay. Wellfleet, I want to say. I believe she, she was original, originally from Wellfleet. Um, I thought she was a great actress. I thought she was really cool. Um, she, speaking of movies based on other things, um, she was in a number of those movies that were based on the old Shakespeare plays. Yeah, ten taming things I hate, of the shrew. I hate about you. Yeah. Ten things I hate about you is taming of the shrew. True, and there was another one I can't think of at the top of my head, but it was also oh, oh, <laughs> which is based on Othello. Oh, oh yeah. Was she was she in a movie based on Othello? Yes, with um, uh, Mickey Pfeiffer and some other people whose names it wasn't very good but it was based on Othello mm. instead of uh, instead of uh, Venetians hiring mercenaries to defend Malta it's about a kid's basketball team and she's the coach's daughter and it's about as good as it sounds I gotta oh, be honest okay. with you it wasn't, it wasn't very good it was a darn fine attempt I could really see where they were going it just it did not hold water yeah, yeah. Well, I liked Ten Things I Hate About You. I mean, I thought, that, I was thought that, that was great. I even love the soundtrack with mm-hmm. um, Letters to Cleo doing two of the best covers uh, of all time, I think. I love their cover of I Want You to Want Me and the other one, Cruel to Be Kind. Mm. Um, I, I thought those were two fantastic covers and it was, it was just a great soundtrack. Yeah, it was good stuff. It was, uh, I thought it was a great movie personally and I knew and yeah. Larry yeah. Miller was one of my favorite comedians from the 80s. So oh, yeah. Larry Miller was, was a great, great comedian. The, yeah, he was great as the dad. Five. Yes. Yeah, he was good as a dad. I forgot he was in that. Yeah. The five stages of being drunk. Did you ever did you ever listen to that? Larry Miller? Oh, five. that sounds familiar. I can't place it. It's a, but I'm it's sure just a bit. It. It's a bit he yeah. used to do. I, I saw a lot of his bits. I can't place that one. Well, he talks Um, about the five stages of being drunk. You know, he's just like, there's, you know, stage one where you just get to the bar or you have a few drinks or whatever. Things are good. And like stage three is like, stage three is like, you buy the guy at the end of the bar a drink because you like his face. And then like stage four is like, you punch the guy at the end of the bar because you don't like his face. (laughs) And stage five is like when you like, that's like the worst, like, when you're up all night and you come out and you know, the sun's up and you're like, that's God's flashlight on you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, uh, you're not, you know, you're not in your twenties anymore. And you're like, what am I, what did I Doing. do? I have to be to work in 45 minutes. And <laughs> Why did I do this to myself? It keeps going too. He goes, he goes like, but you're cool. You know, your friends say, Hey, let's have a few more drinks. It's like, okay, well, as long as I get six hours of sleep, I'm good. And then, like, later on, you're like, as long as I get two hours of sleep, hours sleep. And a complete change of blood, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to check that one. I have a litany of things I'm going to have to check out when we get off. Uh, yeah, the, the between two ferns, though, that's a that's a must. Don't forget about that one. That's oh, the- I, I won't. Trust me. I won't. Trust me. I won't. Um, but you, you reminded me of and it's on YouTube. And I don't make fun of the guy. I think he's great. But have you seen it's on? It is on YouTube. Last time I checked, it was the David Hasselhoff bit where he's been binge drinking and he's like sitting on the floor of a utility room eating a cold Wendy's cheeseburger oh yeah yeah and and it's so funny my wife's and it's, my wife is like like enraged because he's making such a damn fool of himself and she's like you have to see that look look at him look at look at what a drunken fool he is and I watch it literally the first words out of my mouth is oh I have so been there <laughs> yeah because he's doing that oh, oh I no feel one bad. likes me oh. i felt bad for him dude well, i don't too. know what the he got roasted did you see the celebrity his celebrity roast <laughs> no i didn't have the heart <laughs> yeah i don't I, I just don't understand why people turned on him in such a in that way like he became kind of like i don't know almost like they did with vanilla ice you know what i mean like it was like it was cool to hate him and, yeah, and I, I don't understand that. I, I, I think because he pushed so hard for that musical career, and he did not warrant one. Yeah, and I, and I'm sorry. Well, um, he was the bomb in the '80s. I mean, he was the, the bomb 80s, in the '80s, was, and even in the '90s with, uh, I mean, with, uh, you know, with uh, that show, with the the beach show or whatever. Um, uh, uh, Baywatch. Baywatch. Yes, of course. And, and, and then, of course, he was on. Was it America's Got Talent? 
Was that the one he was on? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, he's the Hoff. He's he's awesome. But it was like all of a sudden he pushed for this musical career and everybody went, uh, you know what? No. Yeah. I saw him in Phantom. And trust me, uh, no. And then, it, as you say, it became cool to, to hate him. And I think the weird thing is people have this crazy idea that Hollywood celebrities have this really, really naturally thick skin. And I think a lot of them don't. I think a lot mm. of them, it really, really, really hurts them. And again, when you, as we all know, when you have a couple of drinks, it's really easy to become maudlin. Yeah. And that's really, oh, everybody hates me. Oh. And, I, and you're right. I felt bad for him too. And that's why all I can think of is, oh yeah. It's my, uncalled that for. Stage. It really is uncalled for. I really, I really can't stand that. I, one of the things I can't stand too is when people like, well, like if they don't like your political opinion or something like that, like I notice this a lot, they'll make fun of the way you look or something. I'm like, what has this got to do with anything? You brought and up an really... excellent point once. You an, an amazing point. When people can't fight your argument, oh yeah, yeah. they find personal reasons to attack you. Yeah, yeah. It's called I'm ad, paraphrasing. Yeah, it's an ad hominem attack, is what it's called in in logic. It means to the person. Um, but yeah, and it's just like, but they do that. I, I even noticed that I don't, I, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like it when people make fun of other people because of the way they look or whatever. It's just like, can you, could somebody do anything about that? You know, I mean, there are some things that people can do, you know, uh, like if they're dressing like a bum or something like that, they can dress, but I always hate that. I always hate, well, you know, that guy's got a hook nose or something. It's just like, what? What kind of low punch do you have to have to go there? You know, anyway, so back to the Hoff, uh, which is uh, not because not a crush. Yeah, not a crush, <laughs> not, not a crush. But I know <laughs> that that show spun off a lot of crushes. So yeah. I know that, I mean, you know, Pamela Anderson, Anderson, as we were, like talking, we were talking about, about before. And um, uh, there's another girl on there again who we I don't remember her name, but I actually liked her. I didn't I didn't I've never even seen an episode of uh, Baywatch, not even one. Ep- I've never even seen an episode of it. I don't know why it just es- escaped me. But there were some girls on there that I knew from other places. Then I go, like, oh, she was on Baywatch, too. And one of the girls that was on there was uh the girl who was also in under siege and she, and i thought she was very pretty um all i could think was yasmin bleeth oh yasmin bleeth was gorgeous too but... yeah but that's not the one you're talking about i know the one you're no. talking about for some reason all i could think it was because i thought that's where you were going when you said another one um i know you're talking about can't think of her name to save my life but yeah she was in under siege and, and she was a beautiful beautiful woman and i can't erica l Elenica, Elenica, Elenica. I wouldn't have gotten that, <laughs> but I know who you're Elenica. talking about. Elenica, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, she was an under siege. Anyway, so I thought that was that was great. Well, uh, and then yeah, and then of course we can't look. Like, we can't talk about the celebrity crushes of the '90s without talking about Claire Danes, though. I mean, a lot of people really like Claire Danes. Really? Well. I, well, what do you mean, really? Yeah. She Not about girl next door. We're talking about girl from under the floor. You know? Uh, <laughs> well, that's – now you got to think about what you're saying because – because this is this is people are gonna see this thrash. I'm sorry, I'm being superficial. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm I sorry. Know. Well, a lot of guys li- <laughs> liked her because, well, especially in the '90s, because she did that show, My So Called Life, and that's yeah. back when MTV was trying to break into the whole doing more than music, which is yeah. pretty much the downfall of MTV. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> their biggest mistake. But yeah, uh, they wanted to do that teen angst show that was so popular yeah. in the 90s and 2000s. And uh, Romeo and Juliet, which I thought she did a horrible job with, you know, wasn't a big... You know, yes. I mean, it was such a great idea. Mm-hmm. It wasn't quite executed very, like, perfectly well, but she so phoned in her performance. Yeah. I, just... well, I thought she was the worst part about it. I thought, uh, uh, you know... Mercutio uh... was, I thought, the best. The guy, he was in Oz. He was in Lost. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm ashamed I can't think of his name. I know who you're thinking of. Head. He was Michael in Lost, yeah. But I know who yes. you're talking about. And uh, um, I thought he was outstanding as Mercutio, who's my I favorite so character. Too. Yeah, Mercutio, Mercutio is really my favorite character. That's sort of um, best friend got your back, but a little insane. 
Yeah. Even yeah. though he was always my favorite character in the play. Yeah. And um, uh, he was great. Uh, DiCaprio did a fine job. Um, was just talking about him. In fact, I've been researching him for my uh, uh, retrospective. Well, I think he's stuff. an amazing actor. I think he's. I think he's. I think Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio is an amazing oh. actor. I think he got some a little bit of that too, but it didn't stick. I think he got a little bit of the "it's okay to hate on him" kind of a thing. I think kind of the edge of that started to creep in a little bit, but I, I don't think it stayed. For some reason, it didn't no. stick. Uh, he kind of. I don't know. It just I, the guy is in my opinion, one of the best actors ever. I well, mean, he didn't let it get to him. Yeah. I think the Hoff did. Uh, DiCaprio didn't. It was, it was very similar to Brad Pitt. When, yeah. when people make fun of Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt laughs it off. Yeah. And I, I think DiCaprio may have had the same, uh, taken the same route. Right. Oh, well, also- I think there was a, a thing there in the 90s because he, uh, he was going to do... Uh, he, I, I, I heard this and I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard he was kind of bragging about uh, being in the new Star Wars in the 90s, the, the one that came out. Yeah, in the 90s. Um, and George Lucas just said, no, no way, no way. He's not going to be in this show. And then right around then, I think people were like, kind of, it's OK to hate on him, you know, it's a, but that didn't last very long with him. But anyway, I interrupted you. You were going to say something. Oh, I just Paul Sorvino. Paul Sorvino um, uh, is also in that uh, Romeo and Juliet we were talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see the Hamlet? The new, the new. I didn't see it. Did I have you, not seen the new Hamlet. With I Ethan have not. Hawk. It's not new. I mean, it's like '90s, but they did the same thing. Um, the the one that's set in World War One, Denmark, correct? Uh no. No, you're oh. thinking uh, you're thinking of uh, Kenneth Branagh. Branagh's. Yes, I am. Hamlet. Yeah, I did see no. that one. That's actually right. really good. Um, no, this is uh, it, it was the same concept. It has mm-hmm. Ethan Hawke in it. He plays Hamlet and it was like modern. It was it was exactly like Romeo and Juliet, except except for different actors. I mean, it was the but that Hamlet's my favorite Shakespeare, by the way. That's my favorite. Really? Oh, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, Mine's sure. probably Lear, oh, but really? I love Hamlet. If if you like Hamlet, if you can find it, it's tough to find because the BBC are fascists. But um, the BBC in the late 70s, early 80s did a number of made-for-TV uh, adaptations of the Shakespeare plays. And there's one with uh, Nicole Williamson as Hamlet, and it is outstanding. Mm. It is possibly my favorite rendition. Hmm. So if you, if you can check it out, wow. Okay, but uh, yeah. but yeah, uh, probably King, King. I would have to say King Lear is probably my favorite Shakespeare play, if not maybe one of the Henry plays, Henry V, the obvious choice. But I'm going to stick with King Lear. Always hmm. go with their first choice. Hmm. Yeah, my my first choice. And I'm not like real deep in the Shakespeare, but I mean I've I have an, a you know a good appreciation. I've watched. I've seen a number of the plays. Um, been to the amphitheater and watched plays locally and uh i i think they're really good and um of course like i'm gonna say yeah I, <laughs> e and c thinks shakespeare is really good so you should like him uh but uh, no for some reason that yeah that angst of that the, the angst that comes through in hamlet i really identify with i like i like that one a lot Romy. I was just quoting Polonius in something, and I wish I could remember which quote I used from him. As a matter of fact, there's a. There's, I am Polonius. <laughs> uh, there's if I if I could afford it on my tombstone, there's a quote from Hamlet that I would want on my tombstone, and I don't. I'm going to butcher it because it's been a long time since I've thought about it. But basically, it goes. It says something like, "If it is not now, then it is to come." If it is if it is to come, then it is not now. If it's not to come, then it is now. And I I just I love that that thing. That's basically he's saying that right before. Do you know which which I'm which quote I'm talking about in Hamlet? I am racking my brain. I'm actually going through the play trying to uh, to play. It's something. right before he he does his final fight with with and, uh, the kid the, the um his rival. Yeah, and, has the and, poison sword. Yeah, and and uh. And he's basically, it's basically saying this is going to happen either way. You know, if I put it off, I'm just putting it off. 
And if I don't, and it is basically, it's a resolve to kind of get this over with is, is the sentiment of the, uh, of the statement. But he basically says, if it is not now, then it is to come. If it is to come, then it is not now. And if it is now, then it's not to come. I think and all the expensive yeah. headstone. Yeah. <laughs> they charge like 40 bucks a letter. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they are expensive. Believe me, we've but just yeah. ordered one. So it's, it is expensive. Preaching to the choir. Sorry, right. Dude. No, it is expensive. <laughs> and they take, they, it, and they have to sit for, I can't remember how long it is. They have to sit for like a year or something year. like that to, to cure them so that they don't mm. crack or whatever. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, so, so celebrities of the night of, I think we did we exhaust celebrities of the, let's get back to being pigs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there's one, I can't believe I haven't read into the record so far. All right. One of, one of my uh, first major ones when I was a kid, uh, for those of you who've seen Flashdance. Oh how, yeah. Jessica Beals. How could I have not mentioned her? How what, Jessica I mean, Beals? What did I say? Flash dance. Yeah, just Jessica um Jennifer Jessica, Beals. Jennifer, Jennifer Beals. Beals. Okay. Jennifer Je- Beals. I'm sorry, Jennifer Beals. <laughs> Jessica Beals is married to one of the InSync kids. <laughs> Bite yeah. my tongue. No, Jennifer. Jennifer Beals. I'm so sorry. Oh but, yeah, all that and I butcher her name. Thanks, guys. Uh no, but but no, um, I love flash dance when I was a kid. We all know why. <laughs> right. Well, of course, yeah. We all know why. And yeah. uh, and and of course, another show that kind of uh, that kind of spun off some. Um, uh, well, oh goodness, come on! Uh, it had Elizabeth Berkeley in it. The the television show, uh, Saved by the Bell. Bell. Saved by the Bell. Yeah. So that spun off some peop- some crushes, some pretty mm-hmm. mad crushes in the 90s. Elizabeth Berkeley was in that. Um, uh, who was the other girl who was in that? She was also in Son-in-Law. You know, I, I don't know. Did you? I know, I know you're talking about, but I, like I say, I was a little bit older, so I kind of like missed the boat on that one. Ah, but I, 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 do, so. I do remember them. I remember them, yes. But the, yeah, and then uh, anyway, yeah, there was a, a lot of people who liked those girls as well. Those were often talked about, like we're talking now around a group of guys and talking about girls. It happens. Well, I, I don't, you know, I mean, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm even thinking, man, am I going to publish this or not? <laughs> Here we are recording it, and I'm thinking, uh, maybe I might put out a pretty big disclaimer at the beginning of it so <laughs> they get a little uh, just uh, up front you know some people well i don't think we were but I, I i could see how some people think we might have been a little judgy or a little piggish but the, well. eight, the 80s were a very judgmental time and i'm not saying that uh in a but, good way i mean i i found myself being judged quite often um, 80s. Were, if oh, there's I was, one thing I go ahead. I was judged ten ways to Sunday in the 80s. I was. I, I mean, I was not a cool kid. I was. Well, I was in the loser yeah. crowd. I was in the loser. I couldn't get a girlfriend back in. The people 80s. tend to look back on the 80s as as a golden age. There were certain things that I can certainly criticize it for, and one of the biggest I think was its superficiality. Hmm. And. Um, uh, so were we superficial? Yes. But again, you know, we're, we're talking about young folks and the, the crushes they develop. And that's perfectly normal for guys and gals. And, and, and I think that girls did it, you know, did it too. I mean, you know, they talk about David Cassidy and, you know, Donny Osmond and, you know, all these, all these pe- people. I've Kate girls- McKinnon g- gave a great, great story about how she realized she was developing her first crush when she used to watch the X-Files and then realized it wasn't on David Duke Coveney. It was actually oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, David right. Scully. Right. So to, to each their own, to right. each their own. For sure. And I couldn't blame her, so... <laughs> Well, okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I think we've exhausted the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I'm sure there's lots of crushes people had that, you know, we didn't get to. But that's why we have the Monday Night Live stream. If if people don't, like, if I don't see my numbers plummet as a result of this, then uh, <laughs> then we will be doing the Monday Night Live stream. But again, uh, the live stream that's going to be coming up, we're going to be doing um, a special episode where 
I'm going to let you guys jump in. I'm actually going to do a special episode where I'm going to let anybody show up to the live stream that they want. I will put the link out in the chat box and anybody who wants to show up. It's not going to be this one Monday, but it's because we got Pat, but it's going to be the, the, the following one. 29th. Oh, is that what it is? The 29th? Yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, August 29th. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's the one it's going to be. So anyway, uh, what do you got going on over at your channel there? Well, I just posted um, a much anticipated and much asked for top 10 list of the worst dad jokes in captivity. We're up to volume 13, my lucky number. Oh, you are? Yes, we're up to 13. Wow. I also have the live chat tonight, which I'm doing in Dave Sundstrom's honor because he could not do his show tonight. And I have but, more but of a... Tonight, other... tonight, we don't. I mean, by the time this comes out, it'll... Oh. August eighteenth. Be... It will already early. Yeah, there. it'll already be there. But I did see that just as I was getting on here and setting things up, I saw that dad joke. So those are the best. They're my favorite. They're my worst favorite. I, <laughs> I mean, the, I, I make comments on there like, you know, you need to get a sci psychiatric help. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> I, it. I mean it in all in all. I mean, they are my favorite. They are absolutely my favorite ones. I know. Thank you. Um, I know you do, you know, with the retrospect and everything and uh, the, the sci-fi horror and stuff like that. And I know that's the genre and, and, and you're even told you got to stick with that. But I have to admit, I just I love those dad jokes, man. I just love them. You shall have more. You shall have more. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Well, I guess I don't know what I'm doing. Just, uh, you know, make sure everybody likes, comments, subscribes and to Thrash Pondo's channel as well uh, of course that'll all be listed in the show notes um and um and share all of our videos on your favorite social media we're just trying to make it we got we're just a couple of kids with a dream to make it on youtube and actually pull in an income to some degree and that's where you can help you don't you, you can help by not even having to donate all you got to do is hit the subscribe button and share it uh, uh again and 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 if you're listening to on podcasts you know write a review write a uh give me a star rating and uh you can share it as well so um uh yeah with that all said i think oh well the patreon page the venmo all in the links below if you feel like donating if you say hey i'd like to give some cash to this show uh i am more than willing to spend your money and it's going to a good cause so it's me. So, all right. And just further promoting this show. All right, everyone, stay retro and stay safe.